रिवाइंड करने पुराने सा मुकुट मागे आए बिन्ने। बीओ टीवी टीवी बार ना होने में विधि है। Making headlines on first at nine. Party reforms. Sri Lanka Freedom Party begins party restructure process and Professor Rohan Lakshman Piyadasa appointed as the new General Secretary. Bond scam saga. Government pressurised to reveal the names of parliamentarians who received financial assistance from PTL during elections. Don't try to hoodwink the people anymore. If you do that, we will have to get to the streets. Strengthening the economy. Discussions underway to remove the existing quota system with India for apparel industry. Country first. Sri Lanka's top order batsman Dhananjay included in the team again and flown to West Indies for the three test match series. No to international interference. Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte loses temper and shouts at a UN rapporteur. I do not recognize his rapporteur title. He can go to hell. A very good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Katharina Chang. Now on to your top story tonight. The much-talked-about restructuring process of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party got underway today. Marking the start of the process, a temporary board of office bearers were appointed following decisions made during the party's Executive Council and All-Island Working Committee meeting chaired by President Maitri Pala Sirisena. Professor Rohan Lakshman Piyadasa was appointed as the General Secretary of the party, while former General Secretary Minister Dumindri Sanayaka was appointed as the National Organiser of the SLFP. Following the results of the recent local authorities' election, views were expressed by members of the SLFP seeking for a restructure process of the party. A decision was taken then to proceed with the restructure process at the SLFP Central Committee meeting on the 17th of May. Accordingly, Executive Council and All-Island Working Committee meeting of SLFP gathered in Bataramulla to appoint a temporary board of office bearers. The group of 16 SLFP members who left their ministerial positions recently also participated in the meeting today. Minister Duminda Desanayaka's proposal to dissolve the former board of office bearers had been seconded by President Maitripala Sirisena. Following the dissolvement of the board, President Maitripala Sirisena was reappointed as the party's chairman. Professor Rohan Lakshman Piyadasa, the advisor of e-learning centre of the University of Kalanir, has been appointed as the General Secretary. Former General Secretary Minister Duminda Disanayaka has been appointed as the National Organiser of the party, as well as former Minister S.B. Disanayaka has been appointed as the Treasurer. Meanwhile, Minister Nimal Siripala de Silva, Parliamentarians W.D.J. Seneviratna, Anura Priyadarshanayapa and Susil Premajanta have been appointed as Senior Deputy Chairman of the SLFP. State Minister H.M. Fauzi, Minister Dr. Sarat Amunugama, Minister Mahinda Amaravira, MP Dayasiri Jayasekara, Governor of the Northern Province Reginald Kure, State Minister Piyasena Gamage, Minister Vijit Vijemuni Soisa, Minister Mahinda Samarasingha, MP Dilan Pereira, Southern Province Chief Minister Shan Vijaylal De Silva and MP Angajan Ramanathan have been appointed as Deputy Chairman of the SLFP. Meanwhile, Minister Ranjit Siambalapitiya, Central Province Chief Minister Sarat Ekanayaka, Northern Province Chief Minister Dharma Siridasanayaka, Western Province Chief Minister Isura Devapriya, Uwa Province Chief Minister Chamara Sampad Dasanayaka, Deputy Minister Lasanta Alagiyavanna, Parliamentarians Sudarshini Fernando Pillay and Sumedha Jijaya Sena have been appointed as the Deputy Secretaries of the party. All SLFP parliamentarians have been appointed for the 45-day Temporary Board of Office Bearers of SLFP. Meanwhile, former presidents Chandrika Bandaranayaka Kumaratunga and Mahinda Rajapaksa as well as former Prime Minister D.M. Jayaratna have been appointed as the patrons of the party. Meanwhile, 
the group of 16 SLFP members who recently left their ministerial portfolios participated in the occasion to appoint the temporary board of office bearers for the SLFP. Seven out of the group of 16 were also appointed to several positions in the temporary board today. Meanwhile, parliamentarians C.B. Ratnayaka, Pavitra Vanyarachi, Kumara Velgama, Chamal Rajapaksa, Mahindaya Pabe Vardhana and Dallas Alahapperuma, who are members of the Central Working Committee, said they were not invited for the All-Island Working Committee meeting today. Apita kenda vima karla di bunine, tawa kali kam tuwa patkara kila aranchi akti eno, me tawa kali ke palastara me sadu moling, me pakshya kuda gane gime ta no haki. However, UPFA General Secretary Mahinda Amarvira and former General Secretary of the SLFP Dumindu Disanayaka had this to say about the allegations. <laughs> Executive Director of the Campaign for Free and Fair Elections, Kirti Tenakun, has put forth a request to the owner of Perpetual Treasuries Limited, Arjun Aloysius, and its CEO, Kasun Palisena, to reveal the names of the 118 parliamentarians who received money from the company. Meanwhile, at a media briefing in Colombo today, the organization Voice Against Corruption requested the president to hold discussions with them in order to discuss the future activities of the bond scam investigations. Executive Director of Campaign for Free and Fair Election, Kirti Tenakon, arrived at Magazine Prison, Colombo this morning and handed over two letters to prison officials addressed to the owner of Perpetual Treasuries Limited, Arjun Aloysius, and its CEO, Kasun Palisena. Speaking to media, Tenakon said that the 118 parliamentarians who received money from the Perpetual Treasuries Limited should be revealed and therefore requested Arjun Aloysius and Kasun Palisena to reveal the names of such recipients. Meanwhile, addressing the media in Colombo today, the organization Voice Against Corruption said they have requested President Maitri Palas Sirisena for a discussion with the organization over the future proceedings of the bond scam investigations. Convener of the Voice Against Corruption, Vasanta Samarasinghe, said they wish to discuss as to why a second commission was appointed to look into the central bank bond issuance and why the 106 pages of the first commission were not revealed to the public. He also added that the whole country is waiting to know as to who received money from the Perpetual Treasuries Limited. 
In the meantime, Secretary of the United National Freedom Front, Maitri Gunaratna, threatens of a protest campaign against the government if failed to reveal the names of the 118 individuals accused of accepting money from PTL. We call upon, as the United National Freedom Front, one of the principal people who have accepted money, we are told, is Mr. Kabir Hashim, to come out openly and deny this allegation. We call upon the Secretary to the President, Mr. Austin Fernando, who is now trying to completely deceive the public by not giving this document. According to the law, only after 30 years will the archives release a document unless otherwise the secretary to the president instruct them to do so. Why isn't Austin Fernando giving the instructions? Whom is he trying to protect? Right to information which was bought by this government has been thrown into the dustbin. We call upon His Excellency the President to instruct his secretary to immediately give this list of MPs. Mr. Austin Fernando, don't try to hoodwink the people anymore. If you do that, we will have to get to the streets. Former Defence Secretary Gotabi Rajapaksha today refuted claims made by Minister Field Marshal Sarat Fonseca recently. The minister claimed that the former Defence Secretary received funds from him for political campaigns ahead of the presidential election in 2005. Following an event in Godagama today, former Defence Secretary Gotabi Rajapaksha, however, said that Minister Fonseca was a senior army official at the time and therefore was not in a position to provide such funds. प्रतिभा <laughs> Meanwhile, convener of uh, Maubi Venuven Ranavir War Organization, Attorney at Law Major Ajit Prasanna, says that allegations made by Deputy Minister Ranjan Ramanayaka on the purchase of a land at Khatragama with the use of state money is false. He added that such allegations are made as part of a mudslinging campaign by some individuals ahead of the 2020 presidential election. He expressed these views at a media briefing in Colombo today. I vehemently denied by the instruction of former Secretary Godabe Rajpaksha that property is not owned by him. I am told by Mr. Godabe Rajpaksha, ask Minister Ranjan Ramanayaka, come with myself to Mr. Godabe Rajpaksha with the particular deed of the property and free of charge of stamp duty, he will transfer the property to Minister Ranjan Ramanayaka. Just after the Civil war, the three forces commanders were offered valuable properties from Narahim Peter, closer to Kirimandala Road, 60 purchase each. There was a proposal that not only three armed forces, but the Secretary of Defense himself itself has to be awarded that particular land. When it was consulted with Mr. Gotabe, Mr. Gotabe Rajapaksha refused to accept that. Meanwhile, attorney at law Major Ajit Prasanna added that former Defence Minister Gotabe Rajapaksa did not accept a sum of 600,000 rupees from Minister Field Marshal Sarat Fonseca, which was allegedly used for an election campaign of Mahinda Rajapaksa. Mr. Sarat Fonseca said he had 600,000 rupees in the current account of his own and he withdrew all the money from the current account and handed over the money to Mr. Gotabe Rajapaksa to spend for the election campaign of Mr. Mahindra Rajapaksha. And Gotabe Rajapaksha vehemently uh, refused the, the particular alle allegation. And he said, I didn't visit Sarat Fonseca's house, or I didn't ask a single cent from him. And Mr. Rajapaksha said, if Sarat Fonseca has any document to prove the same, he will answer the same. 
farmers who fall under Zone C under the Mahavali Development Programme charge that authorities have failed to implement a proper irrigation system in the area. They say that this has led to the destruction of 800 acres of paddy land. Farmers of Yakkure and Pitivava, which falls under Zone Z of the Mahavali Development Program, are engaging in farming activities under much difficulty. They were unable to produce a bountiful harvest due to lack of water in the area. <laughs> Farmers added that over 100 acres of paddy fields were cultivated in the past with the water from Yakure tank, but this time officials were not thoughtful enough. However, authorities who overlook Zone C of the Mahavali Development Program in Polonarwa said that instructions have been issued to farmers to grow alternative crops instead of paddy on 25% of their land. Farmers rejecting the proposal state that authorities should give them a viable solution. In line with the 13th anniversary of TV Derana and with the objective of empowering Manusat Derana, the musical show dubbed as Derana No. 1 Stars Live in Concert took place in much glamour at the BMICH yesterday. The event was graced by many artists and performances. The Derana No. 1 Stars Live in Concert saw the performances of many artists who have been joining hands with Dirana throughout its journey of 13 years. Artists who got their break through the reality shows organized by Dirana, including Dirana Dream Star, Little Star, City of Dance and Star City also graced the event. The concert will be telecasted this Saturday at 9.30pm through TV Dirana. Let's now take a look at some other stories making news across the country. A grade 8 student from the Egoda Vale Egoda School in Balangoda was admitted to the Balangoda Base Hospital claiming he had been severely punished by the school principal. The principal admitted that he punished the student for his wrongdoings but refused the allegations that he severely punished the student. Meanwhile, the parents got the child to be transferred to the Ratnapura Hospital for further treatments. Authorities have taken measures to close the Ratnapura Kalavana Road at Dala area due to the collapse of a part of the Kambadula Bridge. The closure of the road affected the residents of Nivitigala, Kolambagama, Sidrupitiya and Karavita. RDA Director for Sabaragamu Province, KPD Kiriyalla, assured to repair the bridge soon. A youth who was at a shop at Rahula Junction in Matara had been attacked by an unidentified group. He had been rushed to the General Hospital in Matara and due to severe injuries, he had to undergo a surgery as well. Matara Police has commenced an investigation into the matter. Security Forces headquarters in Kilinochi had organized an exhibition of new innovative products. All items exhibited have been created by the army officers attached to the camp. You are watching Sri Lanka's number one news channel, Other Than 24-7. Secretary General of the Joint April Association Forum, Sri Lanka, Tuli Kure, says that Sri Lanka is currently holding discussions with India proposing the removal of the existing quota system in the April industry, opting it with a 500 million US dollar worth trade deal. Kure said that this would create a sectoral balance in the country, which currently imports 600 million US dollars worth of goods from India. These negotiations are said to be part of the Economical and Technological Cooperation Agreement, also known as EDCA, between Sri Lanka and India. According to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, the apparel and textile industry contributed for about 44% of total exports and surpassed the $5 billion mark for the first time last year. In 2016, however, Sri Lanka exported over 106,500 million US dollars worth of textiles and clothing to India. Speaking to First at Nine Secretary General of the Joint Apparel Association Forum, Tulikure said 
Negotiations are currently underway between the two sides to ascertain whether the existing quota system for the sale of garments to India, that is limited to 8 million pieces annually, worth $30 million, could be altered to a higher $500 million worth value-based system. According to the Sri Lanka Apparel Exporters Association, the industry has already exhausted this year's quota. We had a discussion and we did the question. The Sri Lanka Apparel Industry requested total removal of quota. And in the process, you know, they came to the position where the, rather than removing the quota, they are thinking to reviewing the quota. So then it was suggested that uh, explore the possibility of uh, you were having a $500 million to no business because we are importing something like $600 million worth of goods from India for the, that sector. So in order to create a sector of balance, we requested that, but our desire is to get it removed. U.S. Treasury Secretary Steve Nushin has faced sharp criticism from angry finance ministers of other G7 nations over America's imposition of new tariffs on steel and aluminium imports. France's Bruno Le Maire warned a trade war could begin in a few days and added that the EU would take all necessary measures to respond if the United States decides to impose tariffs. G7 finance ministers clashed with their U.S. counterpart over Washington's decision to hit their countries with steel and aluminium import tariffs. Speaking to reporters, French finance minister Bruno Limayer said that he told U.S. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross that U.S. tariffs on European metals would be unjustified and dangerous for growth and free trade. However, U.S. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin speaking at a G7 finance leaders meeting in Canada, where he was the target of U.S. allies' anger over steel and aluminium tariffs, stressed that U.S. will abandon its leadership in the global economy. I don't think in any way the, the U.S. is uh, abandoning its leadership in the global economy. Quite the contrary. I think that, uh, you know, we, we've had a massive effort in tax reform in the United States which has had an incredible impact on the U.S. economy. So uh, I think our leadership uh, on the economy, which is one of President Trump's major objectives, that in national security, um, is not only good for the United States, but is good for growth uh, around the world. Yesterday, U.S. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross met Chinese Vice Premier Liu He in Beijing to try to ease trade tensions. Following the meeting, China warned that all trade talks with the U.S. would be void if Washington introduced sanctions. State news agency Xinhua said China was willing to increase imports from many countries, including the U.S. Meanwhile, global airlines and aviation executives warned today about growing international trade tensions, saying they could damage the airline industry and the world economy. The Trump administration has renewed tariff threats against China, while key U.S. allies Canada, Mexico and the European Union have been hit with duties on steel and aluminium. Director General of the International Air Transport Association, which represents most of the world's main carriers, Alexander Dijunek, said he was very worried, highlighting that the industry relied on open borders for the movement of goods and people. Speaking to Reuters on the sidelines of IATA annual meeting in Sydney, he added that, quote, any measures that reduce trade and probably consequently limit passenger travel are bad news, not only for the global economy, but it's very bad news for this industry, unquote. Meanwhile, plane makers Boeing and Airbus echoed that the uncertainty was negative for business and highlighted that free trade helped to drive economic growth, creating jobs. Analysts say that as companies witness quarterly earnings for the month of March exceed expectations, the demand would create far undervalued blue chip counters over the course of the week. During the week, the Austria price index lost 1.0%. Similarly, the S&P 20 decreased by 1.1%. Meanwhile, the average daily turnover for the week was up from last week to 1.3 billion rupees. Let's now cross over to Amanda Lokogamage from First Capital Holdings with your weekly forecast for the upcoming week. Following the sell-off witnessed during the week, 
we saw the market closing in green uh, just above the short term psychological support level of 6400 we have seen foreign selling in the asian pacific region ahead of the fed rate announcement in mid june yes few foreign funds were seen cutting their position in south asian markets however as companies march quarter earnings are more than expectation we believe demand would create for undervalued blue chip counters you are watching Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Ava Verana 24-7. Welcome back to the news. Protests in Jordan against tax rises and austerity measures, the biggest demonstrations in years, continued for a fourth day today. Several Jordanians were injured during a demonstration that was held near the Prime Ministry in Amman. Thousands of Jordanians continued to protest near the Prime Ministry in Amman yesterday, chanting slogans against Jordanian Prime Minister Hani Al-Mulki and the new income law. King Abdullah yesterday chaired a National Policies Council meeting with members of the government. King Abdullah was quoted by state media as saying both parliament and government should engage in a national dialogue to reach a compromise over the bill. The monarch blamed regional turmoil for worsening the fiscal plight of the eight dependent kingdom, which borders war-torn Syria to the north and Iraq on its eastern border. Meanwhile, the protesters say that government's proposed tax bill backed by the International Monetary Fund will hurt the poor and middle class. Jordanians have seen prices rise with salaries failing to keep up. The government, however, says it needs the money to fund public services and says the new tax bill will see higher earners pay more. Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte has told a UN human rights expert who said the country's judicial independence was under threat to go to hell, warning against interference in domestic affairs. The Philippine Supreme Court voted last month to remove Chief Justice Maria Luz Serena, whom Duterte had called an enemy, for voting against controversial government proposals, citing violations in the way she was appointed. The Philippine Supreme Court voted to remove its top judge, Maria Luz Sereno, in May for failing to submit several documents on her wealth and liabilities prior to her appointment under former President Benigno Aquino III in 2012. The Peruvian UN expert issued a statement on Friday about the ouster of the former Chief Justice, expressing, quote, grave concerns about public threats issued against the Philippines' Chief Justice by the country's president, unquote. In a speech before his departure for South Korea, Philippine president lashed out at UN Special Rapporteur for trying to meddle into the country's affairs. I do not recognize his rapporteur title. Tell him not to interfere with the affairs of my country. He can go to hell. Let's now take a look at some other stories making news across the world. Thousands of people attended the funeral of the Palestinian nurse Razan al-Najjar who was killed during protests along the Gaza border. Health officials and witnesses said Israeli forces shot dead the 21-year-old volunteer medic as she ran towards the border fence in a bid to reach a casualty. In a statement, the Israeli military said it would investigate her death. 119 Palestinians have been killed in weekly demonstrations since the 30th of March in the Gaza Strip. Cuba will begin constitutional reforms to formalize opening up with former President Raul Castro, heading the commission charged with carrying out changes to the constitution that will provide legal backing to the island's economic and social opening. The new constitution is expected to include age and term limits for political leaders and to reflect other changes in society, like broader rights for the gay and lesbian community. The last constitutional reform in 2002 decreed that the socialist character of the political system in Cuba was irrevocable. U.S. police officers pulled a woman seated in the railing of Fred Hartman Bridge in Texas to safety late in the evening of the 25th of May, as seen in a newly released police dashcam video. Ma'am, come talk to me, ma'am. You're not in trouble, okay? Police has brought the woman to a local hospital for evaluation and treatment. <laughs> Okay. 
Sri Lanka's top order batsman Dananjay De Silva is set to join the Sri Lanka team for their three match test series, which is to begin this Wednesday. Dananjay was in the initial 17 man squad named for the series but withdrew just hours before boarding a flight to West Indies after his father, Ranjay De Silva, was shot dead on the 24th of May by an unidentified gunman. On to Rugby at League 2018, defending champion Royal College continues their winning streak outclassing their fierce rivals, Issy Patna College, by a massive 41 points to 7 at Havelock Park yesterday. Meanwhile, St. Joseph's College put up a valiant performance to clinch the Reverend Father Basil Viratunga Memorial Shield at CR Nepsi grounds yesterday. Royal College started off the match well, scoring quick points in their favour. The game saw the Royalists going into half-time with a healthy 22-point lead. Royal College collected their points from seven tries and three conversions, while Isipatana College couldn't bounce back as they were given tough competition by Royalists, winning the match 41-7. St. Joseph's College put up a gallant defence to beat St. Peter's College by five runs at the CRNFC grounds yesterday. After leading 10-5 in the first half, St. Joseph's College defended their points in the second half allowing them to retain the Reverend Father Basil Viratunga Memorial Shield. You are watching Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel, Other Verana 24-7. Srila Fernando is at the Weather Centre with your forecast first evening edition. Very good evening and welcome to Forecast First. Your temperatures for tomorrow are to vary between 21 and 32 degrees Celsius with the highest expected in the southeastern corner of the country. Well, when looking at the map, a low pressure zone is set to develop along the coastal belt from Manatogol over the next 24 hours. Well, it will be a sunny day for the areas of Jaffna and Batiklo, but the areas of Vaunia, Anuradhapura, Kandy, Kalambo, Gol and Mathur as well as Hambantota, however, will experience showers. That's all we have from the Weather Centre tonight. Up next is your City by City forecast. And before we go tonight, we'd like to take you to Russia, where the central square in Moscow was illuminated with soccer-themed colours ahead of the fast-approaching 2018 FIFA World Cup. The show is aimed at portraying the emotions associated with soccer in the language of metaphors and abstractions. The show will be projected every night until the 10th of June. We hope you enjoy these visuals and have a pleasant evening. Bringing you the news and information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Other Verana 24 7.